Investigators discovering a horrific scene in suburban California. An illegal bio lab reportedly backed by communist China has been operating under the radar in Fresno. Authorities say the warehouse was packed with hundreds of mice in inhumane conditions, medical waste, and at least 20 infectious agents. Our next guest sits on the House Strategic Committee on China. He's Florida Congressman Carlos Jimenez, and he joins us now. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us on this topic. This topic has not been discussed, in my estimation, not discussed enough. In this lab, they found COVID, HIV, many other diseases. What do we know about not just the lab, but its connections to China? We don't know much about it. Uh, and at this point, what we do know is that it was operating illegally. Uh, it poses a threat to the people of uh, California and the United States. Uh, they were testing uh, for COVID and, like you said, AIDS and everything else. And, uh, and then the, the rats and the mice there, uh, 200 of them were, were found uh, dead out of 1,000, uh, all kinds of of medical equipment and medical testing equipment and uh, human blood uh, and, uh, and they were testing for a lot of agents so we don't know what they were doing or why they were doing it but uh, apparently they're tied to the CCP and, uh, and to Chinese linked firms. Welcome back to the Last Boy Scout Survival in Bushcraft. Today we're in Reedley, California at the location where they discovered a bio lab that is allegedly being ran by a foreign government. Within this bio lab they found approximately 20 different infectious diseases, bacteria, and viruses in unsanitary and unsafe conditions to include COVID-19. Now we're gonna go into great detail discussing all the different things that they found and the conditions that they were under and discuss some of the questions that everybody has as to what the hell this was doing here. So stay tuned. You're gonna learn something and you're not gonna to wanna to miss this one. Now that I'm back at home base and we've gathered all the information that we needed to basically discuss this topic, uh, I want to point out that Reedley is only approximately 20 plus 20 under miles from my home. That's how close I am to this bio lab. How was this thing discovered? Let's start there. It all started back in December 2022 with this green garden hose running through this property in the city of Reedley. Our code enforcement officer um, really paying attention, driving down the streets, sees something that looks out of place, stops, knocks on the door, and lo and behold, we discover um, folks who are storing things operating in uh, 850 I Street, uh, unlicensed, unpermitted. By March of this year, court documents show Fresno County, in collaboration with the city of Reedley, applied for a warrant to inspect the property after inspectors found reasons to believe it did not meet health and safety standards. They later applied for a warrant to abate conditions on the property that were deemed a public nuisance. Joe Prado with the Fresno County Department of Public Health says through those orders, they found Prestige Biotech and Universal Meditech Biotech Inc. have biological agents at the facility. All right, so we know how they found it. When did they find it? How long ago, before they decided to notify the public, did they know about this thing? According to one source, the initial discovery, which has been described by media sources as sketchy, shady, mysterious, secret, Chinese, biolab, unauthorized, illegal biolab, was first discovered December 19th of 2022. We're in September now, 
That's approximately nine months since the time of discovery. And it wasn't released until July. Let's keep reading. March 3rd, 2023. City of Reedley code enforcement workers uncover code violations at accessible and unlocked areas of the facility at 850 I Street, Reedley, California. Violations include exposed electrical panels, a garden hose running through a hole in the rear wall, among others. Among others. Okay, we're going to get to that here in a minute. March 10th, the city of Reedley formally requests a warrant authorizing it to be to enter the premises. Uh, yada, yada, yada. A warrant would allow the city to inspect the conditions. Blah, 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 blah. A pungent odor of mice feces is located. Staff at the property reportedly tell city workers that they are making pregnancy and COVID tests. March 13th, the warrant is issued. March 16th, the warrant is served on Wang, uh, pardon my pronunciation, Zhao Lin, the person responsible for the property. March 17th, Reedley staff engage in email communication with, can't pronounce it, Jiquin Yao, president of Prestige Biotech. Staff requested license or certification permitting the experimentation of mice. Yao and Prestige Biotech do not provide the information according to staff. Uh, March 31st, Yao reportedly tells release staff mice and biological materials found in the location belong to Universal Meditech. So now we're bringing in a different company. Instead of Pre Prestige Biotech, it's Universal Meditech. And we're moved to Reedley from its previous location in Fresno, which had previously burned down a year or so prior. Uh, March 4th, 2023, an abatement warrant is issued permitting entry into the facility uh, through April 20 and start to examine conditions. Owners of the property were served with the warrant on April 5th. A veterinarian enters the facility to find a large number of dead mice. House in Reedley. Inside, mice bioengineered to incubate the COVID-19 virus. The lab was discovered near I and 9th Streets. 30 refrigerators and freezers, some broken, were found filled with bodily fluids. Health officials tell us they are shocked at the biological house of horror. Uh, that number was approximately 175 out of almost a thousand. I think there were 900 and something mice and 175 of them were dead. April 21st, an order of the health officer for the Fresno County is issued through May 6th to inspect and identify chemicals and biological specimens and other hazardous materials. April 25th, Reedley Fire Department Chief Jerry uh, Isaac issues letter to city manager Nicole Ziba regarding fire danger and explosion hazards due to the condition and chemicals inside the facility. Yada, yada, yada. May 2nd through the 4th, staff from the center of here we get to the interesting stuff. Staff from the Center for Disease Control's Division of Select Agents and Toxins determine at least 20 potentially infectious agents are present. Now, of those 20 infectious agents, they are diseases, viruses, bacteria, and parasites. According to court documents, experts determined that at least 20 potentially infectious viral, bacterial, and parasitic agents were being stored inadequately, including E. coli, malaria, and even COVID. The city of Reedley immediately called in the CDC, the FBI, the California Department of Public Health. And we'll go through that list here in a minute. June 3rd, Fresno County Health officials hear from David He over email, who identifies himself as a representative tied to Universal Meditech. He mentions a new facility being prepared in Fresno at such and such date by June 10th, awaiting a city inspection and licensing. Okay, mm, June 15th, Fresno County Department of Public Health formally requests court warrant to enter the premises. June 23rd, the warrant is approved by the court authorizing health department uh, to dispose of all biological material, dispose of medical waste, dispose of infectious materials, dispose of all contaminated equipment. July 5th through the 7th, Fresno County Public Health staff execute the warrant. During this period, health staff and medical cleanup contractor identify 
35 refrigerators holding biological material, including blood and tissue, medical waste, infectious agents, and equipment contaminated by those materials. Staff collected 127 containers of biological material and medical waste during the three-day period. Each container was 44 gallons. July 26th to the present, the court authorizes code enforcement officers as well as state and federal agencies to enter the facility to continue the cleanup of the facility through August 9th. The work during the time includes removing, disposing, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And that was July 26th. So, during that entire time period, why didn't we know about this? I know it does take time to figure out what's going on. And because we're in America, there is legal process and proceeding which, you know, deserve to be upheld pursuant to the Constitution. Uh, however, why wasn't the public made aware of the potential for danger, specifically the local community that could have potentially been affected by all these contaminants? Now, apart from what I just listed to you, from other research from many different sources, all local media, uh, news broadcasting and investigative journalists. Uh, we mentioned how many freezers were on site and the biological materials and chemicals, but what we didn't identify through that timeline were the numerous chemicals, chemical agents that were not labeled, not labeled at all. Now, according to OSHA, all things of that nature are required to have labels uh, to include the proper handling of said materials, storing of said materials, first aid to combat any affliction by those materials, all of which were not included. Of the 20 different infectious viruses, diseases, bacterial, bacteria, and parasites that were identified by the CDC, the following specific were identified. COVID-19, also referred to as coronavirus. Now, which strain of the COVID-19 virus? Was it the Omicron? Was it the SARS? Was it the MER? How infectious and how contagious was this specific strain? Now, if you remember, in reference to the original and initial outbreak of COVID-19, it originated in China, in Wuhan, China. And as of the last six months, according to media sources and other investigative journalists, it has been proven that the initial breakout was from that level four facility where patient zero was identified as one of the scientists working on the COVID-19. So it didn't derive from a marketplace, from a bat. Now, Apart from COVID-19, they also found strains of HIV, hepatitis, B and C, two different strains of herpes, malaria, chlamydia, rubella, E. coli, and pneumonia. Of all the 20, these were the specific ones I was able to positively confirm through several different sources. Now, the remaining of the 20, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much more serious those strains were or weren't. There are four different levels of containment for biological labs. Level one, 
through level four. COVID-19 originated from a level four lab. Biosafety levels are a set of biocontainment controls that are required to separate the biological agents based on the risk they cause on the environment and human beings. These levels are ranked from one to four. Each level has specific controls for containment of biological agents and microbes. The controls are based on the infectivity of the disease, severity of the disease, source of the agent, and route of invasion into human body. Biosafety level one, or BSL-1, has the lowest biosafety level. It includes the microbes that are non-pathogenic. Laboratory personnel can work with minimum risk in these facilities. BSL-1 labs do not need special containment equipment. People can work on open bench tops. These labs are typically used for students and trainee microbiologists. Example of BSL-1 organism will include the non-pathogenic strain of E. coli. However, basic safety practices must be followed in these facilities. Biosafety Level 2 The Biosafety Level 2 is for microbes that are associated with human diseases. That means pathogenic or infectious bacteria and viruses are included in this level. Examples of BSL-2 microbes may include Staphylococcus and Hepatitis virus. BSL-2 labs are expected to have more controls than BSL-1. In addition to the standard laboratory practices of BSL-1, these practices must be followed in BSL-2 labs. Biosafety Level 3 this level includes the microbes or agents that can cause serious or potentially fatal diseases through inhalation. BSL-3 facilities are usually under the control of government agencies, and the laboratory staff is under medical surveillance. Examples of BSL-3 microbes may include yellow fever and the bacteria that cause tuberculosis. BSL-3 facilities should maintain unidirectional airflow. From clean air to the infectious air, the recirculation of air happens through HEPA filters. Additional laboratory practices must include the following. Biosafety Level 4 The BSL-4 facilities are rare in the world, being the highest level of biological safety. The BSL-4 microbes cause fatal infections, the diseases caused by these agents usually do not have vaccines or treatment. Two examples of such microbes include Ebola and Marburg viruses. The BSL-4 facility must be isolated and have dedicated supply air and exhaust air. In addition to the practices of other BSL laboratories, these practices must be followed in BSL-4 labs. We could go down the rabbit hole way deep on that, on what they were doing investigating COVID-19. By the way, within the comments or the within the description box of this video, I'm going to drop numerous links that you yourself can research and investigate and cross-reference in order to verify for yourself if you so choose. But you don't have to take my word for it. Another intriguing fact about these mice that one of the workers that was interviewed at the site uh, spontaneously indicated that the mice that they were utilizing in their research were bioengineered to be carriers of the COVID-19 virus. Let that sink in. You may hear a lot of riffraff about COVID tests that they were trying to work, pregnancy tests. I mean, I have no idea what pregnancy tests have to do with COVID-19 and all these other infectious diseases that were discovered on site, but it sounds like a whole lot of nonsense to me. Several emails and attempts were made to communicate with the home base of Prestige Biotech and Universal Medi Meditech and were in essence shot down. The very brief communication that was only made by email was very vague. Now, as I briefly stated, uh, this business that was operating out of a warehouse was not licensed to be there, not authorized to be there, uh, had occupied other spaces throughout Fresno and Tulare County and other places within the state of California and Nevada. In essence, there was no, there was no oversight. There was nobody to check on them to assure that they were abiding by policies and procedures and Cal OSHA and CDC guidelines for safety and safe handling of all these infectious materials. Now, if you stop and really think about it, a shabby warehouse lab, and you can see the pictures online at several different news broadcasts that have made it out in the, the media. Uh, now, if they have absolutely no regulations and it was found to be in such poor conditions, and the knowing that and knowing that 
the original coronavirus originated in a high security level four lab, that should raise a huge red flag and set those alarm bells off. For me, it just raises too many questions. Nobody knows the true intent of why that bio lab was there. Nobody. Nobody has confirmed if there have been any arrests, if any of those individuals that were on there have been flagged as working for another government, another government's agencies uh, as a spy. Another thing to note is many of the items that were discovered within the warehouse had labels from China. Now, according to media sources, they haven't been able to track the origin of how those made it through US customs. Because according to them, it would have been flagged, it would have been stopped. Were they smuggled? Is it coming into the United States the same way fentanyl is coming from that country and other countries through the southern border? Just a question I'm posing. Is this company and its parent company front companies for something more nefarious that we don't know about? Other, other questions to consider, where did all the samples come from? You would think labs have records of everything that they do. That's what scientists do. They take notes. They take really good notes. They, they document religiously. So how were they acquired? For what purpose? How many more of these types of bio labs exist here in the United States? Exist right here in our local community? Was there anything else discovered during the course of those searches or those search warrants that we're not being told about? Now, any good investigative agency obviously isn't going to show their full hand when they're conducting a thorough investigation. Some things need to be made public for public awareness and transparency. However, there are some things that can be confidentially concealed until the completion of the investigation. So what I would like to know, what I'm wondering if there's anything that's being hidden. Were there any weapons discovered? Were there any important documents that are being withheld from us? Were there any arrests made? Is anybody being held for questioning? Things like that. Have there been any connections to any foreign governments officially that we're not being told about? Another thing that wasn't really touched upon and I think was kind of handled with kid gloves was the potential for danger to the local community. Now, what kind of PPE or personal protection equipment was utilized by those first responders? Were they, le were they wearing nitrile gloves and face masks? Were they wearing the full level four bio suit kits when entering the premises? Have any of these individuals been exposed to or contracted anything as a result of these searches? Is there any evidence that the contamination has leaked or spread outside of that facility? Now, as some of you have seen from the video and pictures that I've already posted, it's not the most secure location. It would literally take nothing to get inside of that facility. And as you may have seen from one of the windows on a metal door that was locked with a simple master lock, the top window portion of that metal door, which was slightly elevated up off the ground, indicating that there was probably a platform there at some point, was missing a window. So I'm sure there's some sort of airborne leakage going on there. Here's another fun fact that you can look up yourself. 
the governor of California, Gavin Newsom, um, gave $365,000. What? What? To one of their parent corporations. Now, I'm not sure if it was Prestige or Universal. Neither the who. This is not an American company. This is a foreign company on American soil that obviously is cutting corners and doing things illegally. And they were given over a quarter of a million dollars for whatever they were doing. Another interesting thing to note, if this lab was there for anything but honorable purposes, let's say of the nefarious nature, and we're looking at saying doing something on American soil, something horrible. Within the Central Valley, there are military bases that in essence protect the entire Western seaboard. Now, I'm not the one pointing this out. I'm simply making reference because one of the councilmen from Fresno actually pointed that out in one of his speeches. And I'm gonna drop a link to that so you can look that up online. All right, so far we've talked about the discovery of this bio lab 20 miles from my house. We've talked about the timeline of events since its discovery. We've talked about what was discovered on site and we've discussed a few questions that are still up in the air that have yet to be answered. Now, let's talk about how we can be better prepared in the event of a biological disaster, which brings me to one of my sponsors who is sponsoring this video today, and that's Mira Safety. Now, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video. Mirror Safety exists for one reason, and one reason only, to provide industrial professionals and the general public with uncompromising equipment for personal protection, utility, and comfort. Mirror Safety provides the same kind of cutting edge equipment and self-defense gear trusted by top tier military operators with key engineering enhancements to make them more practical and efficient on the home front. Everything from their inventory is strictly professional grade, giving you the confidence you need to overcome obstacles in your path. Headquartered in Austin, Texas, Mirror Safety has international partners with agencies and law enforcement groups worldwide. Every new product they develop strives to maintain the same level of value and uncompromising workmanship that have earned them the trust of those organizations. Mira Safety dedicates to providing viable PPE equipment to everybody, including children, the elderly, and others who don't have many choices when it comes to gas masks, respirators, and protective equipment, including your pets. Ultimately, their business is all about safety and protection, which means it's all about people. So they're dedicated to excellence in customer service and satisfaction. Any questions that you have about Mirror Safety, shoot on over to their website, click on their individual products. They have completely detailed, thorough explanations of their quality of equipment. You can even jump on YouTube and they have specific videos or different products that pretty much show off its great quality. I mean, if it's trusted by the military and the high level special operators, you know they need it. I'm not going to lie, their equipment's a little bit more on the expensive side, but when it comes to safety and protection for you and your family, you don't want anything else. So head on over to Mirror Safety. It's unparalleled quality equipment, can't be beat by any other company.